Hey guys, it's Holly, and today I'm going to be doing this Halloween resin kit straight from Japan. I'm so excited about it. It is so cute. I freaked out when I saw this on Abby's channel. I will link her video down below in the description, and I will also link the link to where I bought it down below in the description. This kit comes with a pamphlet explaining how to make all of the different pieces. You get this little transparent sheet that you use to decorate everything as well as these outline pieces which I didn't end up using. And then you get eight Halloween molds. These are so cute and so tiny and I'm really glad to have them for future projects. You also get a ton of little beads and findings and really cute things to decorate your pieces and then you get pigments which is awesome and I'm really excited to have them. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out the pieces that I need from this little transparent sheet. Now I found when doing this kit that it's better to cut as close as possible to the piece that you're cutting out because these molds are really tiny. This was the first time that I ever used UV resin and I have to say there are definitely pros and cons to it. The pros are that the cure time is really fast. You need a UV lamp for this type of resin or you can just use sunlight but it takes longer. You just put the UV resin in the lamp and it cures in just a few minutes. So that's definitely a pro. The cons of UV resin are that it smells absolutely horrible and I think it's just this brand that I got. It is the Handcrafter brand UV resin. It literally smells so bad. It makes my whole room smell. It is absolutely disgusting and I hate the smell of it. It is expensive and you don't get a lot. At least the ones that I found, I'm sure there are ones that aren't as expensive, but I think in general it's a more expensive type of resin. It's extremely thick and for me that makes it a little bit harder to work with because you really have to fight with it. And also it doesn't cure over time. It only cures in the Lamp, which to me is a con because if I get it on something, it's never going to dry. It's just going to stay wet. So this is the very first piece that I made and I didn't do it very well. I didn't put enough resin in the bottom layer um, because I was trying to preserve it because I only had the little tiny bottle. So I just did a little bitty layer of UV resin and then I put in all of my little transparency pieces face down. Then I let that cure in the UV lamp. To make my colored resin, instead of doing cups like I would for normal resin, I'm just going to do little dollops of UV resin straight onto a piece of plastic. I got this pigment everywhere um, and I definitely used way too much. You do not need that much pigment, so yes, this was definitely a learning process, but I have this pearly white, which is really pretty, so I mixed that in. It says to use a toothpick, but I found a toothpick extremely hard to pick up the resin and put it in the mold. This took a lot of practice and it was really annoying. Then I mixed up some purple and then added that to the ends. This process was a little bit messy to be honest. I don't really enjoy having to mix the colors on a piece of paper and then having to put it in the mold. It's just not that great for me. So this first one was really thin and gross looking. I didn't use enough resin, but it still came out pretty cute I think. I don't know what happened to the rest of my footage with the candy piece, but moving on to the pumpkin, I did the same process, filling it with UV resin. This time I used more and it worked out a lot better. Again, this resin is just really thick and it's a little bit hard to work with, but I put in my face piece and all my other decorations, let that cure, and then mixed up my orange, which I put into the mold. Again, it's kind of hard to do with a toothpick. Then I mixed up some green for the stem, cured that, and took it out of the mold. Then to finish it off, I domed it, so I just put some more UV resin on top and then spread it out. Then I added some jewels, and then I added some glitter that also came with the kit. I will say that this was probably my most favorite part of making these little resin charms, was adding in the glitter in the doming process. I found this UV resin at Daiso, and this actually doesn't smell, so I think it just depends on the brand of UV resin that you're using. These little tubes were $1.50, and I could do about one piece with one tube so to me it worked out because I could just go to Daiso and buy a bunch of little tubes. The good thing is is that you don't have to use UV resin with this kit. You can use regular resin which I will probably do from now on but here I'm just making the ghost and I'm adding some pearly white. This one also came out a little bit thin so it was kind of a trial and error to figure out the right amount of resin to use without wasting it. This is what it looks like inside the UV lamp. 
I really like the bat piece because I really like the contrast of the black with the white decorations inside of it. I finally found a way that made it a little bit easier, which is just scraping the plastic instead of trying to pick it up scoop by scoop with a toothpick, so whatever works best for you. Some of these molds were really complicated and it was harder to do this method with. I really like how the bat came out, I think it looks really cool with the black. Then for the cat one, I just wanted to keep it simple and do some moon and stars. This mold was a little bit harder to work with because of the legs and the tail, but using a toothpick you just have to kind of push it in there. I added some glitter to his legs and tail and I think it came out pretty cute. The only other problem I had with this kit is that what it showed on the box, you didn't always get in the kit. So the witch face, I actually had to cut the hat off because it wouldn't fit into the mold. The witch was definitely the hardest one because it has so many different colors. And this one is actually kind of fun because it's kind of like coloring a coloring book. So I did her hat and her cloak in black. And then I mixed orange for the broom. And I added a little bit of black to the orange to make brown for the handle of the broom. Then I was trying to make tan for her face and I accidentally spilled so much white and so I had to like put it back in the container and then when I took it out of the mold it didn't cure all the way so anyways. I'm sorry some of the clips I don't know what happened to you. I think I was just getting frustrated and I wanted to finish it off camera. The little haunted house I put black on the bottom and then orange for the roof. The kit came with this white powder and I thought it was just plain white so I added some to some resin and then it was really clear and so I didn't understand why it wasn't opaque. So then I added some opaque white into it and then I realized that the white wasn't actually white, it was glow in the dark. So that was really cool and I wish I had used the glow in the dark on more pieces, but I'll probably use it more in the future because that's really awesome. I'll show you how it looks in the dark later. I used the glow in the dark on the moon as well. I kind of wish I had done the moon the other way, but that's how it showed on the box, so I just kind of copied it. So those are all of my finished pieces. I think they came out really cute, some of them better than others, but again, this was my first time working with UV resin, so I think it's really, really fun. Um, you can definitely, again, use this kit with regular resin. You don't have to use UV resin, but I really like the idea of putting glitter in the top when you dome it, because usually when I dome it, I don't put anything, but adding the glitter in the doming phase, I actually really like that idea. So I think I'm going to try to use that from now on in my resin pieces. Comment down below and let me know which piece was your favorite. I really, really like the bat. I think that one might be my favorite, but it's really hard to tell because I really like a lot of them. I really like the pumpkin and the ghost and everything. The house didn't come out as well as I was hoping for, but that's okay. I'll definitely be using these molds in the future. I'm really excited to have them. Again, I will put the link to this kit down below in the description. This is what they look like in the dark. It doesn't show very well, but they look really cool. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will talk to you later. Bye.